So here's a general diagram of what I mean by a heat engine. We have a high temperature reservoir over here. We have a low temperature reservoir over here. And what happens is that the some heat is transferred from the hot reservoir into the heat engine. The heat engine does some work on the surroundings and some additional heat is then transferred from the heat engine to the low temperature reservoir. So some heat flows into here, the engine does some work, and then some excess heat flows out here to the low temperature reservoir. All right, so that's a general diagram. Well, the idea is that a heat engine, it operates between two reservoirs of one hot temperature, one low temperature, and heat flows from the hot through the engine to the low. Now let's talk about a particular kind of engine called the Carnot heat engine, named after a French, I think it was French um, scientist in the early 1800s who looked at this kind of heat engine and looked at thermodynamics of it. If you, if you have the textbook, ball, it's in figure 3.1. If you have another textbook, you can see a heat engine. And here's one I pulled off the internet. And you can check this out here if you're interested in doing it yourself. So there's a picture of Carnot, French scientist, and this is the cycle here. I'll just give you uh, what this is going to look like here. So the engine goes, heat is transferred, this is pushed back, turning this wheel, and then whatever this fluid is, we're going to consider an ideal gas, and it's compressed, the wheel still turns, and so on. That's what we're looking at. The Carnot is the engine is a system. So when we look at heat and work, we're considering the engine as a system, and that uh, heat going into the engine will be positive. Work done by the engine on the surroundings will be negative, and so on. And the heat transferred to and from the engine to do work on the surroundings. And in the Carnot heat engine, this is a perfect engine. There's no friction whatsoever. So all these things are frictionless. And so really we're getting the absolute positive best engine we can. We're just making this a frictionless piston. The idea of the Carnot cycle, which we just saw on the previous slide, this is the Carnot cycle and it goes up and down, consists of combinations of reversible expansion and contraction of ideal gas. So remember when we said reversible, you get the most work done out of a system when you go from the initial to final state by a reversible process. So the Carnot cycle will give us, what we're looking at is efficiency, which we'll define in a minute. It gives us the best efficiency possible in taking some heat from a reservoir and making the engine do some work. So we're doing a reversible expansion contraction that will give us the most work. And also we have a perfect engine, no friction. So there's the heat engine we just saw. Uh, if you want, you can go to this website to run this little flash animation if you want by yourself. And here are the four steps of the Carnot cycle. The first is a reversible isothermal expansion. Well, let's, let's see if we can restart this. Okay, here we go. So this is a isothermal expansion, meaning we have the hot reservoir. So we have two heat reservoirs. Here's the hot. And it's transferring heat into here to maintain this at a constant temperature and pushing the piston back. Okay, so that's the first step right there. Now, the second step is a reversible, all these are reversible, a reversible adiabatic expansion. Now, remember, adiabatic expansion, expansion means there's no heat transferred into the system. So now we have an insulator here. The gas is still expanding. There it is. And now we've expanded the gas. The third step is the reversible isothermal compression. So now what we're going to do is to switch out this insulator into the low temperature reservoir and suck some heat out. So now what we have this is isothermal. Now heat is flowing out of this into the low temperature reservoir and the thing is compressing down like that. And then finally the fourth step is reversible adiabatic compression. So on this fourth step, what's happening is that we're changing this low temperature reservoir to a insulator. So now we have an insulator. And now we compress the gas here adiabatically. Let's look at that again. So now we have high temperature. In this case, is 600 Celsius. Actually, 600 Kelvin looks like. High temperature is isothermal. This block is 600 Kelvin. 
we're putting in some heat in there. There we go. And now we have the adiabatic expansion, remember? Adiabatic expanding a gas, the temperature of the gas is going to drop. So now the temperature goes down. And when it gets to that low point right there, we switch out the insulator and put in the low temperature reservoir, which is equal to 300 K, the temperature of the gas at that point. We suck some heat out. It's isothermal. That third step is isothermal. And then finally, here we're going to switch again to the adiabatic, replace this with an insulator. And now the temperature goes up because we're compressing the gas adiabatically. Expand isothermally, expand adiabatically, compress isothermally, isothermal compression, and then finally we will compress adiabatically temperature changes. So that's a the Carnot cycle. And we're going to look at this thermodynamically.